this is Fat Guy Flies RC coming to you from the main cave. We're going to do show you the radio setup on the L39 Albatross with a 50 millimeter fan, and uh, we're going to do the maiden after that. Now, when you, I've got an AR410 installed. I have an 1800 milliamp battery, basically right in the middle of the tray, kind of, kind of more towards the back and uh, start an AR410 Spectrum receiver. Now, what I have done is the S-Bus, you have to excuse the beep, but that's from batteries that are charging. The uh, S-Bus that comes off the vector system, I plug that into the rudder channel, okay? And let me show you, that is also, and that's already picked as aux B. And I have it assigned to my B switch. So I'm going to show you how that looks. After you've installed your receiver, plugged your vector system into all the appropriate ports. They're labeled. Aileron goes into Aileron. In other words, channel 2 on your receiver. Um, the labeled throttle goes into the throttle channel or channel 1 on your spectrum receiver. The, there is no rudder. So that would be channel three, and that's where you're going to plug in the one that says S bus. Now, when you go, you've already got your model, okay? Go to system setup, okay? And what you're looking for, go down here to channel assign, and you see how it says rudder is NA, right? But aux two is already assigned to B. If it's not, make it assigned to B or whatever three position switch you wish to choose, okay? And then go down to next, and then uh, 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 then affirm or validate that aux two is aux two. Okay, so now you know. And looky here, rudder is aux two. So the rudder channel has now been assigned as aux two. So let's go back to previous. See, see rudder says NA but aux 2 is B. The important thing is aux 2 here. Aux 2 down here is still aux 2, but it's on the rudder channel. And that is what's important. So if you set it up that way, okay, then you know that aux 2, which is your vector, can be controlled by whatever three position switch you use. I assume I used B. Now, let me show you what that does. Oh, and don't forget about the little insert I did in the middle of the video. Make sure when you go, oh, look at that. Whenever you go to hook up your ailerons, I'm, I'm sorry, your elevator, make sure that before you, you can either do this after, make sure everything fits, but before you attach the wing, Okay, make sure your servo is centered by either A, using a servo tester, or go ahead and put your battery in, or your receiver in, and binding the aircraft and making sure your elevator is centered. But once you've got it centered, and you know that elevator servo is centered, then you can attach your two elevators. But you'll find that the two control rods are a little short. So they're, you'll see them come in, You'll see the control rods come in and they'll crisscross to one or elevator servo with a little um, rub screw in there. Loosen that rub screw out, pull your control rods out enough to attach them. And now I wanted the inner hole, but you can do the outer hole for less control, but I wanted the inner hole because I want to get a lot more deflection with that, um, when I say the inner hole, the hole closest to the control surface. That's always the rule. The closest end gives you the most control. Okay? So you can see I got a lot of elevator. Okay? But anyways, once you hook that up, anchor your wing back on, and now you've and and that way you've now got you know there is no rudder. You've got your elevator hooked up, your ailerons are hooked up, okay? But back to the uh, channel assign. If it's on B away from you is their version of safe, okay? And look how that aileron there is kicking up and holding position. What that will do is that would make the model right itself. Look at that elevator, okay? Look at the side view. Look how that elevator is going up and then levels out, okay? 
See it kick up? And then it levels out. That way I know that the model is going to try to self ride it. Look at the ailerons. Look how the ailerons are changing their position. Look closely at the ailerons. They're moving up. See how their center line goes back to trim? Okay. Watch the elevator. Okay. It goes up. Then you'll see it go down a little bit because that would level the aircraft. Now, I have put an 1800 roaring top right there. I have found too that you've got to have the nose on and you've got to have, okay, look at that. Right on the CG, right on the CG, that line that's just inside, on that tape basically, right to the front of that tape there, that 1800 right there will bounce and I'll get a solid five minutes, four and a half to five minutes on that eight, I should on this 1800. I'm gonna start off with three and a half minutes on the first flight, but then, then I'll probably be able to kick it to five minutes. The model calls for a 1300, but I would push that all the way forward. I'm not gonna be using a, a 1300. I have a 1400 that I might try, but for the most part, I'm gonna run the 1800 in this thing. I'll get the best amount of flight time and not so heavy to work. Uh, 2200 might work, 3S is gonna be a little piggish. I would go with an 1800. That's probably about the most perfect for these little planes I have found, just my experience. I'm gonna fly it the first time without the decals on there, simply because, well, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see well, how, much, how much time I have for weather and getting out and flying, if I have time to put the decals on or not. But, as you can see, with an 1800 right there, right there where you can see it, Okay, just the end, the 1800 right there, even with the opening. You see, almost basically in the very middle of the battery strap, but that plane will CG perfectly and level right there, level flight right there. So, of course, now I gotta set it back on there. right there basically there you go now again that B is going to give you your three levels now look, look at that if you notice when I put on the, the version of safe okay see, that, see how that thing kicks up like that all right, elevator kicks up all right now look close at the elevator I don't know if you can see it or not. Okay? But when safe is on, the elevator goes up just an ever so slight amount. Almost almost unable to tell. But then back at, you can even, even, even hear it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But I noticed that just ever so slightly with the, the, their version of safe or optimized mode, that elevator is actually kicked up just a tiny bit and that way whenever you toss the plane you're gonna you're, this these little planes don't just toss them forward don't just give them a little a little chunk no give them full throttle and throw the thing i mean you know you don't have to run forward like i've seen other people do with these but just just give a full throttle a nice upper chunk and she and it should lift right out should have no problem at all and uh, so in a review, take your rudder lead from the vector, which is labeled rudder, plug it into your rudder channel on your uh, receiver, go to channel assign, and you'll see that rudder says NA, go to the next page, and you'll see the aux two is assigned to aux two, or is, uh, then assign that to B. And then as long as aux2, and then on the next page, if it shows aux2 is assigned to, uh, rather is assigned as aux2, that's what you need. That's what you're looking for. Your, your, your aux channel is what you're going to need. Your auxiliary 2 channel is what you're going to need on a three position switch in order to get all three levels. So the three levels that I'm talking about are the gyro letters of vector. And what that is is optimized mode, which is like 
AS3X wind gyro, which is what I'll be flying it in, versus no gyro, there's no help at all. It's just your control, control movements. And then stability mode, which is self-level. And for, for those of you who are starting out, I would start out with stability mode, okay? Which you can tell if, if the control service stay up, the elevator stays up, that aileron stays in a uh, position like that, and they keep changing it just to bring your plane back to neutral. That is safe for stability. And then just the gyros, you hear the gyros. And if you want to test to make sure they're working, put your hand on the control service, and the, the control service should move towards the movement. So I'm going to lift up on the tail, then that control service should push up against that movement. It should go, the, the, ele, the control service should go towards the direction you're moving the plane. So if I pick this wing over here up, this aileron should kick up, and it does. This aileron should kick up, and it does. I can feel it. And it the, eleva, the elevator should kick up, and it does. And, I, and then it returns back to neutral. That's your gyro. And if you had a rudder, it'd be the same way. If this had a rudder gyro, I'd put my hand out, and I'd pull, push the, the plane this way, and then that rudder should turn against the movement should go towards the move of the plane and that brings it back to straight and neutral and that's on any gyro that's how gyros work okay the only difference between a regular gyro and the safe is that that control service stays in that position until it senses the plane is straight and level and that's all that is okay all right well um i'm going to have my rates my rates are going to be um, 20% expo or 100% throws, and just to show what that looks like, make sure I'm just in the, gy in the uh, uh, no gyro or uh, optimized mode. That's what my 20% expo looks like. And I left the ailerons the way they had them hooked up, which is on the outermost pole on the uh, control arm. So, Still going to have a decent roll rate, but I want a lot of elevator because when I come in, I want to flare, you know, maybe try to do a high alpha. I'm going to need a lot of elevator for that. I like to, most, a lot of my planes, if it's a prop driven plane, I like 30% expo, but on jets, I like anywhere from 15 to 20% expo. I want a little bit quicker of a response because I'm flying faster and I need to get out of trouble quicker. So. <laughs> But it still softens enough to where it doesn't feel quite so jerky. So I think 20%, 15% is about perfect. Um, my elevator or my uh, placement for my AR410 was right there between the, where the battery goes and uh, where the control board is or the, or the vector system. So right in there, the brain just double sided tape uh, uh, here to install. And that's a nice looking little model, isn't it? Isn't that just a good looking little model? And look at that side. You know? The, um, you can see the fan up in there. Let's give you a little bit of. Oh. <laughs> Move the camera, didn't I? And let's see, just, does this thing have a one for one? You know what else I just noticed? It has no cheaters. No cheaters. Okay? The only thing you've got is those regular jet-like inlets. Okay, so but what that means is you're not going to get... Um, going to run into the same thing with the T, like you do with the T-33. You want to get full throttle and a nice upward chunk. Okay? Because... Since you don't have any cheaters, you don't have as much air going in there, it takes a little bit for it to spool up to get enough speed. So, full throttle, nice jump. All right, let's go do the maiden. We'll meet you out the field, okay? Bye-bye. This is fun. Hey folks, how y'all doing? This is Fat Guy Flies RC. This is going to be the main of the Arrows Hobby L39 Albatross. Just want to get a good look at that plane. Look how I love the markings. I went with the Russian uh, Air Force 
uh, stickers and uh, I'm going to be flying her. I'm going to start the first, the maiden, the first flight is going to be in the uh, optimized mode and uh, which is the same thing as AS3X and uh, I've got that 1800 milliamp battery basically in the middle of the battery trap and uh, yeah so we're gonna try to see if I have, have a little bit of fun with her um, um, we got right uh oh up elevator down elevator uh oh got to change our uh, I just now noticed that my are going the wrong way so definitely got to change yeah this is why you do perfect example of why you do a uh, control surface test before you ever take off because that'd been bad right left up down all right now they're in the right uh, configuration I'm running an AR 410 spectrum receiver so a good looking little model. I'm going to go over to the ground. Now we're going to take off um, basically full throttle at about 45 degrees up like that. And I'm going to circle towards uh, the highway. Get away from that sun. Full throttle. Whoa! Okay. Take her back to the AS3X mode or optimize mode. What a sweet flying little jet. Sweet flying little jet. All right, let's try landing her. Like I say, I don't have optim. I don't have stability on. There we go. Sweet flying little plane. Um, like I say, it's got the vector system. It's got three. It's got the self level or stability mode. It's also got no gyro, so nothing. And then it's got optimized mode, which is like same thing as AS3X for wind mitigation. It's a nice little plane. So I think it's $159. If you use my purchase link, um, you go to the Hobby Zone. I'll put a link in the description of this video. We'll take you to the Hobby Zone website and then look for the L39, which you, you won't have any problem under their Arrows products. And if you put in the code FGFRC, or fat, fat Guy Flies RC, FGFRC, you can take $10 off the price of your L39. Good looking little plane, flies pretty good. I, I think it would fly better if I, I gotta, gotta get fine tune that CG a little bit. Maybe I was okay where it was. Um, but the vector system, the wind mitigation, it's having a hard time today with this wind. So it's a good little plane, fly it on a calm day. Y'all have a good one? Good looking too. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and then planes. Bye-bye.